once again, good to be here. It's good to see Brother Logan. And I hadn't seen him and his family since what last year. I believe was it last year or now? Anyway, yeah, it's good to see you and good to see all that have come out to be with us tonight. We try to spread the truth of the gospel in this area. Yeah, I thanks to Bill for inviting me down. And but I may try to do my part and try to do what I can do. Uh, with me and Zach for the message that he, he just delivered, you know. What does the gospel mean to mankind? You know, we, if we look at the book, you know, if it wasn't for the gospel, it would be all men, as Paul said, the most miserable. So we need to look at this thing seriously and and, 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 and try to examine it by way and mean of the scripture. You know, last night I, I tried to establish a fact. I'm going to tell this little story first and then I'll get you. And I tried to establish the fact of that the, the church that God had in mind in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, no man on the face of the earth could build that church. Jesus said, God said it was going to be one that was holy and was going to be pure. He said, it was going to be blameless. That means it was going to be false. So that, that new man out all together. So, you know, when you start looking at that, if, if you, you know, we had one law that was faultless and he took it out of the way because he couldn't save you. We're talking about the Lord Moses. It was fault. It had fault. So it was fault. I'm not saying it's fault. It was fault. It had fault. So God took it out of the way. He had to give us a perfect law. One that would save you. And that would be the one that Jesus would give. You know, but anyway, going back and I'll tell you a little story and then I'm going to go on. Uh, this, little, this man, I heard this all about two or three weeks ago. Because they had a story. They were telling a story about a farmer. And they said this farmer went into a congregation. They didn't call the name. So he went into the congregation and he was dirty and clothes were ragged and, and the people were kind of shining him. They were getting away from him. Then he went there and and uh, said, and the preacher, the second, the second trip, the preacher came to us and he told him, said, hey, brother, said, why don't you talk to the Lord before you come back the next time and, and, and talk to him about your dress. And he said, okay. And he said, and the man, the next week when he went back, he went to the preacher and he told the preacher, said, I talked to the Lord about what you asked me to talk to. And he said, you did? He said, yeah. He said, he told me, he said, he didn't know nothing about what y'all were talking about because he'd never been in this church. And you, when you, when you look at that, he said he'd never been. Yeah, you know, he, they, they, somebody missed it, didn't he? He'd never been in this church. What he said, he don't know anything about that church because he didn't have but one in mind when he said he was going to build a church. He don't know anything about these people outside of the body of Christ. Why? Because he had one church in mind, and through that one church, he was going to use it to do it, to save the world. Amen. Everybody that wanted to be saved would have to be a member of that church, you know. So, you know, when you start looking at that and look at that, I tried last night to establish that fact. That God, when you start talking about what God had in his mind, how in the world a man going to know what's in the mind of God? Not going to know it until you get in the book. God revealed his mind to us through his word. Amen. And when you start looking at the word, then what these people come up with is far fetched from what's in the book. So if it's not in the book, then it couldn't have come from the mind of God. You know, but like I said, but when you see all of these people come up, but like I said, now God had to get this thing into the world. It was in his mind, Zach, but he had to get it into the world. So what he did, he had to use men and people that he had carefully selected to do it. He had to, he had to get it into the world because if he hadn't, it wouldn't have been done us any good. But he chose people that he selected and he carefully guarded the church all the way until they were born into the world. <clears throat> Carefully selected it. And you know, so to me, that doesn't make any sense. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to protect something for thousands of years. And then I'm going to let you, I'm going to put it into the world. Then I'm going to let you put your hand on it and mess it up. <laughs> that doesn't make any kind of sense, does it? God carefully protected the church, and he's still protecting it in ways that we don't even know about. You know, Paul, when Paul and, and, and Jesus them all put that curtain, it's not but one gospel. They seal it down. Leave it alone. You can't mess with it. Amen. Other foundation can no man lay, and that which is already laid, leave it alone. You can't do anything with it. That's it. So he tried to do it. And then Jesus even, even did everything in his power to warn the people. Matthew 15, 13, he said, Every plant that my heavenly Father had not planted shall be rooted up. So he did everything in his power.
power. You know, Revelation chapter 22, 18 and 19, add thou not to the words of the prophets of this book, whosoever add to the words of the prophets of this book, to hit for, he said, to them shall be added the plagues of life, and whosoever taketh away from the portion of this book, his portion shall be taken away from the book of life and from the holy city. So you know what he's saying now, that when God put this thing in the world, when he revealed it, I said, leave it alone. That's it. But men, they just weren't satisfied That's it. with God's plan. They weren't satisfied with his way. See, God's plan was the only one that was perfect. It's perfect. The people in the end, it might not be perfect, but the plan is perfect. And it would do exactly what Zach said it would do. Uh, it would make us free. But you know, like that. But when the church, you know, when the church came into the world, everybody, and we gotta, and like I said, what about topic? Let me get my topic. One church for all people. That would even prophesy, even in the Old Testament down to the New. And you know, one thing you keep in mind. Remember what Paul said in Ephesians two and verse twenty. Talking to the church of Ephesus, whose foundation is built upon the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ Himself, being the chief cornerstone. So everything that I say and I preach and I teach, it's got to be and be consistent with what the prophet, what Jesus and the apostles taught. You know, Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter two, verses two through four, Isaiah prophesied some seven hundred forty years before it came. It shall come to pass in the last day that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain, shall be exalted above the hill, and he said, all nations. Remember what I said, one church for all people. I just said, all nations will flow into it. And they shall say, come in, yeah, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord's house, into the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his path. For out of Zion, he said, to go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He even said, where he would start at. You know, people get stuck. God in America, God in Rome. God did say, he told you where it would come, when it would come, and he told you how it would come. That's it. Mark chapter 9 and verse 1, he said, he said, some of you standing here should not taste death. Until you see the kingdom come with power. I don't know how people can miss all of that. And it came with power on the day of Pentecost. But what I want to do here, and I'm, I'm going to deal with when Jesus came into the world. John chapter 3 and verse 16 to 18. What did Jesus say? I came to God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He said, God didn't send me into the world to do it, to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. In verse 18, what he said, he said, he that believed it not on me is condemned already. Why? Because he not believed it, but the point my, I'm trying to get you to see is when Jesus came into the world, the world was already condemned. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get everybody on the same platform. See, when we get on the same platform, then we know what we got to do to get out, out of our, un, our, our condemned situation. See, if you're on one platform, Zach, I'm on another, then you might think you can go this way, and I think I, but God didn't have but one way for all of us to come. Isaiah verified that. Jesus said in John chapter 10 and verse 16, Other sheep have I which are not of this fold, that I must bring in, and there should be one fold, one shepherd. Let's see how people get what they get out of what they get. But anyway, he's still laying the foundation. Matthew chapter 28, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teach them to do them all things, whatsoever I have commanded you, and Lord, I'm with you always, oh, even to the end of the world. We still see all of them in agreement. One church for all people. Then you still, and then and, and Paul talked about the church, I think Zach mentioned a few minutes ago, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 3 through 5, 3 through 6, rather, he said, Paul said, Wherefore I received it by revelation, whereas I wrote it for a few words, that when you read it, that you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in ages past was not made known unto the sons of men, but now has been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. He said, and he said, what well, now here's the message that the Gentiles should be members and fellow heirs of the same body. Everybody. 
everybody. How can we miss that? How can people miss that? Everybody would be members of the same body. But like I said now, to get back to get back to where I'm trying to go, when Jesus came, the whole world was condemned. You know, but like I said, now you're gonna have to do something to get out of that condemn. Let me let me go to Romans chapter one. Romans chapter one here. Let's see if I can read it. Glasses here. Romans chapter one and verse eighteen. Look what Paul's talking about. Here's where he condemned the Gentiles here. He can condemn the Gentiles. Too many pair of glass. He said, For the wrath of God has been is revealed from, from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. He said, Who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which which, which may be may, may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. He said, For the invisible things of him. He said, from the creation of the world, clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they would be without excuse. He said, but when they, he said, but because that day when they knew not God, when they knew God, he said they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. He said, because, yeah, that's a lot of reading, but it went on to 32, and he said, who well, knowing the judgment of God, he said that they which commit such things, the word of death, not only to do them, but have pledged in them to do them. The point is, he's talking to the Gentile nation, and he's condemning the Gentiles under sin. They are condemned because of their sin. And just look right down in Romans chapter 2, and verse 2, 1 through 3. Therefore, he said, talking to the Jews, Thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art, wherein thou judgest another, thou, he said, Thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest another does the same thing. He said, But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And think not, o, he said, Thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, he said, and does the same. He said, Thou, he said, thou shalt not escape the judgment of God. Don't you know when you judge another, you give them the, the Jew would give them the same sin that the Gentile were. Paul said, how can you condemn them when you give them the same thing? Amen. I'm trying to show you that all of us were sinners. In, in Romans chapter 3 and verse 9, look at what he said. You know, we can get people on the same platform, look what they, what they were saying. See, this is what messed some people up. When they think they're better than somebody, then that messes you up. You think you don't have to do what everybody else do in order to be saved. Look at what they said in verse 9. He said, what then? He said, are we better than they? Are we better than they? <laughs> How are you better than they and you're sinning just like they are? you sinners just like they are. What makes you better than they? So he went on to say, he, he said, for, he said, we have, he said, for we have proof, before proved both Jews and Gentiles on the sin. Both of your sinners. Both of your sinners. So you know what I'm saying? You gotta get everybody on the same platform, then you can do something. Right? Yes. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, he said, For what? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You gotta get everybody right here first. <laughs> See, you gotta get everybody right here first. Paul said in what? Romans chapter uh, chapter 5 and verse 12. For by one man sin and into the world and death by sin, therefore death passed upon all men, and that all had sinned. Now we see we all in a mess now. We all in the same on the, on the same platform. Now what do we got to do to get us out? See, God sent the, the gospel, you know. He sent his church. By way of means of the church is the only way that we can get out of the mess that we're in. And everybody gonna have to come the same way, you know. Remember what Jesus told Nicodemus? John 3, 3 through 5, fairly, fairly I say unto thee, that except a man be born again, that he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus asked the question, how can a man be born again, can the second time into his mother's womb, and be born? Jesus said, very, very, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, that he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man. He said, except me, unless. That means there's no other way that a man can see the kingdom of God unless he's born of the water and of the Spirit. Water, he's talking about baptism here. He's talking about baptism of the Spirit by the word that the Spirit would speak. So you've got to be born again. 
And then when you start looking at that, that's what Jesus told Nicodemus he had to do. Now what did what did the other what did he tell the other people they had to do? In Acts chapter two and verse thirty six through through forty, remember when Peter uh, stood up before those Jews on the day of Pentecost, and Peter said, "And let all the house of Israel know surely that that same Jesus whom you crucified, he said God raised him, and he made him both your Lord and your Christ." And the thirty seven they said, he said, when he heard this, that said unto the apostles and the brethren, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He said, for the promises unto you and unto your children and unto all them that are fall, even as men of the Lord our God shall call. And then he said, and with, with many other words, that he exhort them and warn them and telling them to, to save themselves from this untoward generation. It said, and for the one that they that gladly received the word, so they were what? They were baptized. They did just what Jesus told Nicodemus he had to do. In order to be saved. See, I'm just, I'm, I'm just trying to let you see that we all are going to have to do the same thing. Not just one church. Now, forget about all of whatever else out there. Because God had one church in mind. He had one plan in mind. Amen. Now, all this other stuff, okay, come from the minds of men. <laughs> okay, let me try to move on here. <laughs> And in Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 8 here, when Philip went up through Samaria, you know, Acts chapter 2, he was speaking to the Jews on Pentecost. Acts chapter 8, he went up through Samaria. 8 and 5, look at what he said. He said, but Philip, he said, went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. In verse 12, and he, he was talking about the kingdom of Christ and all that, but he said, in verse 12, he said, but when they believed, Philip preaching the things, he said, concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Everybody got to do the same thing to get in this kingdom. So Mary's an old and mixed, mixed breed of people. They were not full of blood. They were mixed breed. And then he went on to Acts chapter 8. He got to eat the Ethiopian unit. He picked up a, a full-blooded Gentile. Over the unit said, Acts chapter 8, by verse 36, Here is much water, what does it mean to be baptized? Philip said unto you, If thou believe, that thou made it. And he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and he took it down in the water, both of them went Philip and the unit. And he baptized them. Everybody, my point is this, that everybody got to do the same thing in order to get out of our sinful condition. And it's not but one way to go. We're going to have to be in a church that God had in it. Now, I'm not talking about all of these buildings. You know, church, when you look at the word church, church that means an assembly of people. That's all that word means, an assembly of people. But it's what you attach to it that, that defines what it is. You know, when you start talking about the <laughs> T.D. Jakes, you're talking about T.D. Jakes church. I don't want to hear nothing about T.D. Jakes church. That's not in the book. Amen. Christ's church is in the book. Jack Vanaby, I don't want to hear nothing about Jack Vanaby. He real twisted up in his head. <laughs> I want to hear about what Christ said. Amen. Got a crap old dollar. All he wanted some money. Give him some money. And I guess he'll be all right. We trying to get your, uh, people, people soul saved. That's, it. That's what the church of Christ is all about. That's it. But he doesn't have but one place for all of his people to go. And, and, and Paul, remember Paul, even Paul, in Acts chapter 9, when he went to Ananias, and Ananias told us that Ananias told uh, baptized him, I'm going to get 22, he, he, when he was giving account to, to Agrippa, he said he stood before Ananias, and he told him to arise and be baptized, washing away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. You got all kinds of examples where it showed all those people did the same thing to get out of their, uh, their condemned situation. Amen. But you got people down there, they said, you don't have, you know, I was, I was a member of the Baptist church, and, and it was a Methodist lady. She, her husband was a member of the Baptist church, and she was Methodist. And she had been there 20 years. Serving in everything, you know, she sang the choir, so served on the communion table, she was us, and she was all of that. She was saved, long as she was a method, but they said, but she said, I want to uh, place my membership here. They said, you're going to have to be baptized. I said, and I stepped in there then, because I knew it wasn't what I was feeling trapped. I said, 
She's going to have to be baptized. I said, what do you mean she's got to be baptized? She already saved. If she's saved, she don't have to do anything. Priest said, no, she got to be baptized. I said, well, what is she getting baptized for? When a person is saved, they don't have to do anything else. So he was saying in so many words that baptism was essential for her to get in the Baptist church, but it didn't have nothing to do with her salvation. What kind of foolishness is that? <laughs> you got to do it in order to be called a Baptist, but it had nothing to do with your salvation. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't take the woman in until she was baptized. A whole lot of foolishness. But, but anyway, Cornelius came in the same way, Acts chapter 10. And let me get on, move on. It's 10 minutes. Yeah, okay. All right. And you don't want to get down to during this particular time. What happened to all these people that, that were baptized? In Acts chapter 2 and verse 4, it says, The Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. They were being added to the church that. God built. That's the church they were being added to. Not the church of the men. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. Paul said they were being translated from the kingdom of darkness unto the kingdom of his dear son. They were being translated out of the world. They all did the same thing. And like I said, during this particular time, you know what you talked about? Paul talked about in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4. Paul said that one body. One body. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18 said, He's the head of the body, which is the church. So he said that, and he pinned that down about AD 60 and 61. It wasn't but one church at that particular time. We know there was some little, some, some schism going on in, in there. You know, they were, but anyway, they had problems in there. But anyway, it wasn't but one church. Being called sealing, you know. Let nobody move you. Other foundations can no man move. And that which is laid. And that is Christ Jesus. He was trying to get them to see that it wasn't no other place to go. Just stay right here and work out your problems and your indifferences right here. Five That's what Jesus said, okay. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse, verse, you know, they all had the same responsibilities to the church. They had to walk by the same rule. They all have to mind the same thing. Philippians chapter 3, verse 16, whereunto you've already obtained. He said, let us all walk by the same rule and let us mind the same thing. That's what he was telling us. He was everybody walking by the same rule. You don't have any problem. That can mean you walking in step. That will never be a problem with us. It's only when a person walk out of step that you have problems. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 3, he's doing everything he can to hold this thing together. He said, let us do what? What word of the vocation when we've been called? He said, with all meekness and Lord and Spirit, he said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the body of me. So what is he saying? Yes, there were going to be problems in the church. Yeah, there were going to be some indifference. But what is Paul telling them? To put forth your best effort to try to keep peace in the church. Don't go back and rebuild walls that Jesus tore down. Amen. He tore down the wall of attention that divided you and had to separate it. Don't go back and rebuild those things. That's not going to do anything but do what? But divide you. That's it. Try to understand one another is what he was saying. He talked about trying to get them to come together. Trying to get them to stay together. That's what he was trying to do. You know, but like I said, a lot of times we forget to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And here, here's one that we overlook sometimes. In John chapter 13 and verse 34 and 35, Jesus said, A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. And he said, And by this all men shall know. Wait a minute, he said, Love one another. Skip something. See, I think that's what we overlook a lot of times. Love one another, he said, As I have loved you. Wait a minute, Zach, I got to back up now. He said, I have loved you. I don't know if I even love now. See, he done took that. Brother Seal, I, don't, I think I love you. But he said, love that I have loved you. That's going a little bit far, that Priscilla. I love, I think I do. But he's telling me, go to that. I died for you. John, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16, he even said that. They love one another, he said, even to the point that you will lay down your life. So, you know, we better examine this thing, this love again, to see if we love each other. Sometimes we talk about love, and we won't even help a brother when he's down. 
Now, how are you going to die for somebody when you won't even help him when he needs your help? Amen. We better go back and examine the kind of love that he's talking about. But anyway, they all have to do the same thing, you know. But there's so much division in the world because a lot of people don't want to walk by the same rule. That's what it is, you know. And then people, when they don't want to walk by the same rule, they're going to go their own way. Amen. Remember what Paul said in Acts chapter 20, verse 28 and 29, he told the elders, he said, Feed the church of God. He, he said, Take heed unto yourself and to the flock, which the Holy Spirit has made you overseer. Feed the church of God, which is purchased with his own blood. He said, I know that upon my departure, many arriving wolves are going to come in. They're going to take advantage of the flock. But he was warning them and telling them to take heed to themselves. Then from the first Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 1 through 4, for the Spirit speaking expressly that in latter time, here's your division. That in latter time, many shall depart from the faith. The teachers seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They're going to lead the faith and teach what they want. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Paul said, I charge you therefore before God and before the appearing of the, our Lord Jesus, who should judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. He said, preach the word, be in sin and season, out of season, approving the book and exhorting with all long suffering and doctrine. He said, for the time will come. What mean when I didn't do it sound like they get tired of the truth and now they want to hear what they want to hear. They want to hear something that soothes and then something that tickles the ear. Something that pacifies the flesh. That's what they want. But Paul said, you preach the word. You preach the word. I don't think I better cut off. I know in five minutes I had right. But anyway, Jesus came into the world. We better, if we want to be saved, we got to be members of the church that God had in mind. He didn't have but one in mind. And the one that he had in mind would save the entire world. Amen. You don't need anything else. You don't need anything but that church. As a matter of fact, those other churches, you can't be saved anyway. Because God's not looking at nothing but, you know, when God comes back, you know what he's looking for? He's looking at the blood of Christ. Amen. And if you're not under the covered by the blood of Christ, you're going to be passed by. Amen. You're going to be passed by when you come to the church. So if you have been, been bought by you under the blood of Christ, then you'll be saved in the day of judgment. You'll be saved. But like I said, so a lot of people, they, they fail to realize. They think you can go out here and they don't take it. They don't see it in light of what God was talking about. Yeah, no, God don't know anything about these other churches. Why? Because that's not what he had in mind. He had in mind one church for all people. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 19, he said, God was in Christ doing what? Reconciled the world back unto see. himself. So you, if you're here this night, tonight and you need to obey the gospel and be a member of the church that God built, that's the only one you can be saved in. Amen. So if you're here tonight and we encourage you to come, but together we stand and sing.